I posted the last time on um, anxiety when you're dealing with grief or in my case a major disease and what I realized as I was posting it is well the article in itself says okay um, anxiety is normal it's just another stage of grief there's nothing that tells you how to deal with anxiety and you know modern treatment is a lot of times medicine and sometimes you don't want to take medicine um, especially if the reason you have the stress and anxiety is due to disease um, and even I think well, anytime but even if you're going through anxiety because of grief I don't know that you need medication um, you I mean you know the idea of medication on top of what everything else you're going through I don't know that that medication is always a good idea uh, sometimes if you're dealing with day-to-day -day anxiety and it's something you go through for years not necessarily because of any one thing but um, you're just prone to panic attacks or you know and you know whatever form of anxiety through general life you might need medication for that in addition to trying to deal with it in other ways but you know that's for you and your doctor to decide I'm not going to make any judgments on that but it did make me realize going as I was watching the video when I was posting it that I didn't give any ideas for how to deal with anxiety and so what I did was I went to a couple of different websites and got some tips for dealing with anxiety so it wouldn't just be me it would be you know like the professionals um, and and these are non medication you know these are alternative medicine um, like exercise and yoga things like that um, so the first one I went to was WebMD it, you know just popped up at the top of the Google search um, so exercise is number one I noticed on all of these that I checked exercise is always the number one thing on the list um, and it says exercise and is it boy exercise is an important part of physical and mental health um, and that's true because I know when I was walking with Tucker that I did feel better it gave my mind a chance to calm down you know as well as my body um, and so I, I always did feel better after I walked and now that Tucker can't walk like that we don't go for walks I'm, I don't want to go without him and so I haven't been exercising um, sleep is another form and a form of anxiety control um, quality and quantity um, they say eight hours of sleep a night and if it's hard for you to fall asleep then you need to get into some kind of routine this is always when I see leave the screens you know in the other room don't bring your phone your Kindle and everything into bed that's where I have a problem because I read on my Kindle and I go to bed and I read and I, I do have mine set for blue light, the, the nighttime setting, so that does help. Um, but that's something I probably need to get away from. Uh, it says stick to a schedule, go to the bed at the same time every day, get up at the same time every day, and that's something that I do, I do do. Uh, be sure your bed is comfy, so if you like it on the hard side, get a harder bed if you like it on the soft side get a softer bed make sure you're comfortable no matter what keep your room's temperature on the cool side uh, especially if you're having hot flashes yeah I always have a fan going in my room and that's another thing is the the ambient noise at night even if I turn the fan away from me I have to have that noise I don't know why it's just something I got used to at some point 
and now I have to have it. Um, ease up on caffeine and alcohol, and that includes diet pills, some headache medications, chocolate, and tea. I'm not a tea drinker, but the chocolate, the before I had my surgery, my um, bariatric surgery, that was a hard one. Um, but caffeine is an upper and alcohol is a downer. And so those can both affect, you know, either way. And then headache medicines, I, I do take a daily medicine for migraines. And that's something that because I get the migraines, that's something else that I have to deal with. Um, schedule your worry time. So let's see, doctors recommend that you pick a time to think about your fears on purpose. Take 30 minutes to identify what's bothering you and what you can do about it. Have your worry session, in quotes, worry session, at the same time every day. Don't dwell on what ifs, focus on what actually makes you anxious and then what you can do to alleviate that anxiety and stress and how you can make it better. Deep breathing. So if you're starting to feel anxious, take those deep breaths. In, out, in, out. <sighs> um, and that's something you can do anywhere if you're stuck in traffic and find yourself getting anxious, deep breaths. That's a big one here in Hawaii, we have a lot of traffic. Um, be the boss of your thoughts. Turn any negative thoughts into positive ones. Picture yourself facing your fears head on. Okay. <laughs> I guess that sort of plays into, I tend to, if I get a, like a negative thought in my head, like. If I think about, oh, you know, this could happen, this bad thing could happen, I have to play it out in my head. I always had this feeling that if I don't play it out in my head, it's going to happen. So I go through the whole scenario, how I would react, what would happen, um, and it goes any kind of bad thought, like, you know, I. I when my daughter was little, it's like, what if she were kidnapped? What would I do? And then I would have to play out the whole scenario on, you know, how I would react. What are the first things I would do? What would I tell the police? Would I know what she was wearing? I have to make sure I know what she was wearing at all times. And so from that point on, I was conscious of what she left the house wearing, um, how her hair was styled, everything. And it never happened. And I've, you know, it's like, because I played it out in my head and I made sure I knew what to do, that I was ready for it. And so it didn't happen. And it's just kind of like this bizarre thing that I have to go through in my head to turn these negative thoughts around and to make sure that I know that I can defeat them if they do happen. If that makes any sense at all. I don't know if it does. It does up here, but when it's coming out here, I don't know if it does. Um, tame tense muscles, so relaxation exercises. You focus on a muscle group and you just try to like, ugh, I get stress in my neck a lot. And so it's like just, doing these and trying to ease the tension out. And so you focus on one muscle group and ease the tension out a little bit at a time. Um, help out in your community. So that gets you out in the community. It gets you out with other people. You're doing something good, which makes you feel good about yourself that can help you relieve your stress and anxiety. Look for triggers, and that's an important one, I think. Um, 
think is and this is direct quoting think of times and places where you notice yourself feeling most anxious write them down if you need to look for patterns and work on ways you can either avoid or confront the feelings of panic and worry so this is kind of like me thinking through the whole thought process you know i've i've already identified what could happen and where my stress would come from and what you know i've like worked out in my head what to do to confront that again i don't know if that makes sense i don't know so um, next time you'll be better prepared when it affects you so this is kind of like if you have panic attacks and you have to go to the mall you know there are going to be a lot of people well there might not be at your mall but if you're going to a mall where there are a lot of people if you're going to a concert if you're going someplace where you know there are going to be a lot of people and you have stress or panic attacks when there are a lot of people when you're in a crowd but you know in advance you're going to this place you can prepare yourself in advance. Okay, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna take these deep breaths before I go in. I'm gonna relax. I'm going to think about wide open fields and flowers and you know whatever else calms you. I'll, I'll think about a beach with rolling waves and you know you you prepare yourself mentally for going in. Um, another website I went to is the Anxiety and Depression Association of America. And I'll link both the WebMD page and this page down below. Um, and so again, stress and relaxation techniques, meditation, yoga, and, um, and it says one of the top 10 practices of complementary and alternative medicine is yoga. Um, and acupuncture. And so if that's something that you think might help you or that you'd be interested in, you know, check out some acupuncture. And, you know, here in Honolulu, we have a very large Asian culture. We have Chinatown, which you can find an acupuncturist on every 10 feet of Chinatown space. So those are some tricks that you might use or look into at least if, you're suffering from anxiety and just want to do something on your own to help alleviate it before you go see a doctor, you might want to talk to your doctor before you try any of these. Um, I am not a physician. I am not well versed in anything except my own experiences. And so I do try the deep breathing. Like I said, I tried the, um, you know, the thought process. Uh, I was doing exercise. <laughs> Sadly, I do not anymore, um, which my doctor reminds me I need to go back out and do. Um, and yeah, today is November 1st, so I'm wearing my skull candy, or sugar skull earrings. And I actually I have a t-shirt on too, which you can't see in this, and leggings. I was going to do makeup, full makeup, but I woke up with a migraine this morning and just thought, no, I can't concentrate that far. So, um, but if you think of any other methods of controlling anxiety that I haven't covered here, feel free to comment on them down below and let us all know what, what you do, what helps you, because it might help me or someone else down the line and just breathe deep and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.